You know, there are a lot of Disney collectors out there. And I think the reason people collect this stuff is because it has such wonderful memories for them. It just reminds them of when they were a child. We're here at Walt Disney's Carrollwood Barn, and today we're going to be talking about some interesting and really rare pieces of Disney history. This was Walt's Play Place. Or what has been referred to as Walt's Happy Place. Walt had a lifetime fascination with trains. And then sometime in 1948, he was out at one of his animators' houses, a fellow named Ollie Johnston, who had a backyard railroad. And Walt said, I gotta have one of those. The barn became well known among friends and colleagues. And Walt, being a kind and generous soul, would invite many of them to ride his trains. He did a lot of dreaming and thinking down here too. He was dreaming about building the theme park, the first ever theme park. And uh, the barn also took on another moniker, the birthplace of Imagineering, because a lot of the initial ideas for Disneyland all took place in this barn. This particular doll is a 30s Charlotte Clark doll. And he, as you can see, he's kind of in a little bit rough condition. <laughs> he was uh, loved. Yeah, he was loved, very much so. Charlotte Clark made the first Mickey Mouse dolls that Walt and Roy actually really liked. Some of the specific things about the Charlotte Clark doll is that if you notice the eyes, you can see the pie eyes. The pie eyes are definitely specific to this generation of, of Mickey. This is called oil cloth, and oil cloth was very common in doll shoes. It gives you that kind of a shiny look, and it, it, it's just brighter looking. The ears are made out of wool felt, and then the, his face and the rest of him is, is a very high-end velvety. These are mother of pearl buttons that she used on all the dolls for the, the buttons and the Mickeys. Originally, this would have been very, very bright gold. Oh, okay. um, and then his face would have been much whiter, but over time, you know, things, it just colors from smoke or from just light. But his, his tail's still there and his shoes are in pretty good condition, so. These particular dolls are a pattern doll. This is a pattern that these dolls were probably made of sometime between mid-1930s and early 1950s. Walt and Roy wanted a doll in every child's hands, and that was hard to do. They couldn't produce them as fast as the public wanted them. So Charlotte created a doll pattern from McCall's so that people could make the dolls for their own kids. And now we have an, an angry Donald. And in red. Yes, this is a very angry Donald. <laughs> Maybe he didn't like red, I don't know. But um, this is unique because most of them were blue. This is the only red one? Or I don't know maybe? of any other red ones, and I would never say there's not one out there somewhere. Now on this one, the red one had a different pattern. A lot of the Charlotte Clarks had, they had buttons on the blue. There were four buttons on the front of them, almost yeah. like a sailor military look. This one specifically just has the bow tie. So they made patterns for the Mickey, the Minnie, right. Clarabelle, Horus, Goofy, and Pluto, but I don't know, that I've never seen a pattern for a doll. So it was not a pattern doll. The, the idea that there's a Clarabelle pattern and not a Donald yeah. Duck one is a crazy it's, thought. It's, yeah, pretty yeah. odd, considering he is definitely the most, uh, out of all those at group, he would be the most known. Yeah, character. second so, billing. Yeah. Well, maybe Daisy stood him up because he, he doesn't look happy. Could be, could be. It was a bad date. <laughs> this painting is by Joshua Metter, who was an effects artist at the Walt Disney Studio starting in about 1936. And it was created for a short that Disney put out called Four Artists Paint One Tree. Walt sent out four of his artists to paint this one single tree, but in varying styles. Mm -hmm. 
We didn't know where it was for a number of years. We found it in a collection of Dr. Richard Humer, whose father was a story man at the studio from the 30s, and his son had it, and his son recently passed away and passed it on to our historians group, the Hyperion Historical Alliance. We are dedicated to preserving Disney history, and this is quite a big piece of Disney history. The value of a painting such as this can be really high. And Joshua Metter's paintings frequently go for three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. Some have gone for more than $10,000. But because this has had so much exposure, so many people know it, it could be priceless. We're here with animator and Disney legend, Floyd Norman. He's brought this book, The Art of Animation, and he's gonna tell you why it's so exciting. This is a very special uh, book. Back in the 1950s, we were doing a film called Sleeping Beauty. We thought it would be great to have a book that would explain the animation process. When these books arrived on the palette, I was one of the first to get my copy of The Art of Animation. Now, having the book was great, but it needed something. I wanted Walt's signature, and I knew the only way to be sure was to take this book up to Walt's office and have him sign it. And here it is. Oh, that's amazing. Believe you me, this was a treasure. You know, there are a lot of Disney collectors out there, a lot more than I even realized. And I think the reason people collect this, this stuff is because it has such wonderful memories for them. It just reminds them of, of when they were a child. And then they have the opportunity to watch their children grow up and get their first Mickey Mouse ears and all of that. So all of these items, whether it be a toy or a book or whatever, they hold precious memories. And that's why people are so passionate about collecting Disney.